Hey guys, welcome back. In this episode, we're going to continue the inventory system. We're going to finish up the back end a bit so we can actually work on the front end, the fun stuff, the stuff you can click on and interact with. We're going to create a very simple interface. It's going to consist of a list and then like a details panel, something like I have here. I've got a, uh, a list that can be, it's, it's scrollable. It's going to have names and icons. And then over here, we have a details panel that shows the information about the item that we have selected. And then I have a button that I can use to interact with that item. So if it's a potion, I can drink it or a sword, I can equip it. For example, if I click on the potion like I have here and I click drink, it's going to remove the potion from the inventory and it's going to uh, consume it. It's going to go through all the, um, the loops that it has to. It's going to go through the inventory controller and then through the consumable controller. And then it's going to use the items consume method that we have on it. And the same for the weapons. So if I have... Uh, my great staff this has the name and the description it'll have stats in the future but for now it's just very simple I just wanted to make sure everything was working first and then I can click equip notice it's different than the drink option because we use the action name that we define in the item class so I'm going to click equip and notice it took it away uh, that's still there though that's something we can we can change but I notice that I'm actually equipping the staff now so that's pretty cool right pretty simple uh, the interface is it's simple, but it's 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 not ugly. It's not uh, cluttered And once we get icons in here to look pretty cool and uh, Some stats over here. Maybe throw an icon over here or something like that. I don't know How are you going to spruce yours up, right? This isn't don't copy mine Do something that you want to do and just learn how to do it from watching how I do mine and maybe do it better Hopefully do it better so let's get into this. Uh, one, one more thing though. Notice that I equipped my staff and the staff went away and I have no idea of, no way of knowing what staff I have equipped or what weapon I have equipped. I just I can't know that from the inventory. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a character panel over somewhere that's going to have my player stats and it's going to show what weapon I have equipped or what other equipment that I have equipped. Uh, depending on whatever you have. I just have weapons for simplicity's sake, but you can have whatever you want. So it's going to have uh, my character stats, and it's going to have the weapon I have equipped, and then I can click on sword and equip it, and it will swap the weapons out, as you would expect. But for now, all it does is delete that and uh, update my stats. It doesn't actually throw the item back in there, because we have no way of knowing necessarily what item to bring back because I don't have it set up. But for now, we're going to keep it simple and let's jump right into it. All right, the first thing I wanna do is I want to create an inventory folder inside of my scripts folder. So I can keep all of my inventory stuff in one place because there's gonna be quite a bit of it once we get done here. We can uh, grab my, let's see, we've got item, item database and inventory controller. I want to drag that into my inventory folder. And all the other inventory scripts that I create will go in here as well. What I want to do first is let's go ahead and open up um, my inventory controller in Visual Studio. And what I want to do is go ahead and write out the add item method, get that done, and uh, So the first thing I'll do is I'll write out my add item method. The, the method is going to be handled by all the things it wants to add an item to my player inventory. So it's going to be a public. It's not going to return anything. It's going to be called add item or maybe give item. Makes it sound less like I'm making up an item and more like I'm just handing over an item, which makes sense. And give item needs a string, item slug, something like that. And we can use this, since we have the slug now, to go through my item database, grab the instance of that database that we created, and do get item. Right, So we can do that to get it based on the item slug. But if I do this, I want to add it to my inventory. So what I'll do is go ahead and pass item slug to get item. Then I'm going to do uh, something that would add it to my list of items, which I don't have a list of items just yet. So let's go ahead and do that. 
This is also going to be public because it's going to be something that a lot of things are going to access. And it's going to be a list of items. I'm going to call it uh, player items. And we're going to make it equal to a new list. Uh, yeah, we'll just do. Won't be a property for now. Item. Just like that. Let's see. So what I can do with that. Well, what I was doing there is I can do player items dot add. I'll get my fingers right here in a second. Dot add the result of the get item using the item slug. And that's pretty straightforward, right? So it's going to go ahead and add that item to the player items list. And what I can do to make sure that it's getting the right item to this is I can log it out there and log out the slug, or I can make sure that um, the player items actually has that item in it. And to do that, I can log it out here. So I'll get it right in a second. And do player items dot count items in inventory added item slug. Just like that. So it's going to give me the amount of items in my inventory, first of all, and then say what item that we just added. Pretty cool. So what we'll have to do uh, a little later on in this video is notify the UI that we just added an item or removed an item so that it knows what to do if it needs to add another item to the list or remove an item from the list. That way the UI itself is removed from the content. It just represents the content. It doesn't actually hold any valuable data for the content. It's just there to show you what items you have in the back end. Pretty cool. All right, also I want to do a couple of methods that'll handle our controller. So we have the player weapon controller and then the consumable controller. So I'll do one, it's for, it's gonna be a void, equip item. And we're doing this because we can access this through the instance of inventory controller. So in our inventory, if we click on the equip button, it can go through the inventory contro uh, controller and it can talk directly to the player weapon controller, which is what we want. So we don't have to handle hooking up all of uh, the inventory stuff to each controller individually. We'll use the main controller to handle breaking it down for each one. This needs an item, uh, item to equip or something along those lines. Then I'll do player player weapon controller dot I think it's equipped no equip weapon and then pass it the item to equip just like that and we'll do the same for the consumables so consume item well, I don't need you right now uh, consume item will need the item to consume and then I'll go through the consumable controller consume item item to consume right and that's all we'll need for that and I will be adding another method or two in here to handle a couple more things in this episode but for now that should be all we need to get started with playing around with some items one thing I know I'm going to need is an item I want to go ahead and add another property to description. Description is called description, but I think in my JSON it's called. No, it's description. Okay, it's fine. I don't know why I second it's called item description. That's right. Okay, so uh, I want to do. We're going to create an enum that's going to represent the type of item that it is. So if it's a weapon or if it's a consumable or a special item like a quest item or something along those lines, we will know ahead of time before we try to use it, right? So what I'm going to do for that 
It was going to define an enum. Now, an enum just shortly is you're, you're creating your own type and you're defining the values that that type can be. Pretty simple. I'll show you really fast here. It's going to be a public enum. Everything's public. It looks messy, but so far it seems to be the, the way we need to do it. Public enum is going to be called item type. Uh, we'll call it item types um, because the actual item type will be the property of item. And it's going to have a couple of values. You're going to assign it like you would a property. So the first value will be weapon. And then you'll have consumable. And then maybe quest or something like that. And then I'll have public item types. Notice it matches the enum that we created, as that is now a type that belongs to item. And I will call it item types. Or sorry, item type. There we go. And now all I need to do is add this to my item constructor here. Came after description. It will be called item types and underscore item type just as usual there. Then we're going to add it. This dot item type is equal to item type. Cool stuff. So now we'll add this to our JSON file. So we have that data to work with. Item type. Now we're going to set it up so that we can actually define this as a string in our JSON. If we wanted to do it so it just worked out of the box, we would have to use the index value of the enum. In this case, um, weapon is 0, 1, 2, and so on, right? So that's not fun though. So we're going to make it where we can actually define it as a string, like this is going to be a weapon. Right, just like that. That's pretty cool, but it's not going to know what to do with that once it gets that um, passed on down to this enum. It's not going to know that it's looking for a string, right? Even though it's a JSON constructor, it's still not going to know it's going to be looking for an integer, so it just won't add anything to it and it'll be null. So, what we can do to fix that <clears throat> is we can add an attribute to this enum type here for item types to let it know that it should convert the enum to a string or the string to an enum. So to do that, the first thing I'll do is I'll be using uh, newtonsoft.json and I will add a JSON converter. This will look familiar to you if you work in types and different uh, editors in Unity be type of, I meant actually attributes, not types, and then it's going to be a type of newtonsoft.json. We're going to go through converters, and we're looking for the string enum converter, just like that. So it's telling this, whenever the JSON converter gets on top of this one, it's going to be like, hey, this one says to convert a string to an enum, and this happens to be an enum, so I'm going to make the string match whatever the string value of these values are. Pretty cool, pretty easy to handle. And that's going to be that. Um, what we want to do is we're going to check to see in our inventory details panel, the, the panel that has the name of the item, the description, and it's going to have the button for equipping or drinking or whatever. We're going to check to see if it is a weapon or a consumable or a quest item before we use it just in case we want to do something differently based on the type of item that it is but we don't have anything like that yet to work with so we just set it up for when we get there the next thing I want to do is I want to set up a system so that when something happens in the game we can notify the UI that something changed so in this case whenever we add an item to the player's inventory whenever we do the give item method I want to be able to update a method in the inventory system or a method somewhere else just depending on whatever subscribes to that event 
So the way I can do that is I just gave it away is we can use some events to handle that so we can actually send messages to other objects that are waiting for that event to fire. So in this case, when give item happens, I want to talk to the UI and say, hey, we just got an item. This is the item that we got. So add it to your list, that kind of thing, right? So we're not really coupled together that much, but we still have information going the way it needs to go in this case one way so to do that what i'll do is i'll create i'm just going to create a ui controller for now with the intention of it handling different ui elements not just the inventory but for now it'll be just the inventory so it's gonna be ui controller maybe ui it's gonna be more so just events so i could do something like um event handler or something like that. I don't want to get it mixed up with Unity's events because we're going to do a couple of different things in here just for hours. Nothing to do with Unity's event handler. But um, go ahead and open that up. All right, so I'm going to drag my consumables back into my resources. <laughs> and uh, inventory, UI event handler. And here we are. Let's still call them this though. So I'm going to do UI event handler okay so I don't need any of this so now for this we're going to have off the top of my head just one delegate with a couple of events that are going to be related so let's see the, the delegates gonna be no return type and uh, it's gonna be called item event handler this is going to be the one that handles anything that happens with the item or with an item in the inventory or anywhere, I guess, would be ideal, but more so for the user interface. So item event handler. And then I'm going to have a, a static event because we're going to be able to reference these outside of the handler itself. And we also want to be able to reference them from things that don't have a direct reference to this object. So to do that, it's going to be a static event because our player inventory is going to be subscribed to this event. And that's important. That's the whole point of this. It's going to be item event handler as the type is the delegate that we just created. So keep in mind that we created that as a type and now we're using it right here as an event. And then it's going to be... Uh, make the event on item added to inventory now it might seem kind of verbose but it needs to be so that we know exactly what event we're working with just like that right there so what I want get this either we're going to call this event whenever this method is called right here it's going to be just a, a simple static method that takes an item Notice that we have we have to use the same signature here because the delegate that we're using has an item as a parameter. So we have to keep the same signature for our method. It's going to be handling calling the event. So what's going to happen is our player inventory controller, whenever we get an item, is going to call this method right here that I'm about to write. And then that's going to handle this event. It's going to call this event. And anything subscribed to that event is going to get notified that hey this item was just added and I know this because this item was passed to me through this event and that's what happened so to do that I'm going to do public static void it's going to be called item added to inventory just like that it's going to be item item now notice this is the same thing as this event except this is on that's a typical convention for events is on because it's when something happens. So on name change, on item pickup, on player death. It's the same thing here. It's going to be calling the event on item added to inventory. And we're going to pass the item that was added. Just like that. So anything subscribed to this event. We'll get the notification and realize, okay, here's the item that was added. So our UI now knows what item was added. So it knows what name and all the data of that item. So we can pass it to the details panel whenever it's selected 
or whenever it's used, we know what um, what we're doing when we use it. Pretty cool. So the same thing would be done for removal, but we're going to get to that in a little bit. For now, we're working with just one event. So that's pretty cool, but we don't have anything to test this with because we don't have a UI. Now, there's going to be a lot of things, a lot of components that make up this system. So we're going to make it another one right now. It's going to be inventory UI. Just like that. I'm going to open that up in Visual Studio. And this is where we're going to handle most of the inventory UI stuff. And by that, I mean it's going to handle actually adding the elements to the list of the items. It's going to handle the toggling of the actual panel itself and showing that item. And uh, that's really pretty much it. It's also going to handle whenever an item is clicked on, it's going to talk to the details panel and send it data based on the item that was clicked. So it's, it's pretty simple in the end. Um, what we'll need for this is we're going to have to reference the inventory panel and then we'll also have to reference like the actual list itself and then we'll have to have a reference to each item element that we create. Uh, so for now what we'll do is actually let's go ahead and get on the UI and get that set up and then we'll get into filling all that stuff out. So to do this, I'm gonna go in Canvas. I'm gonna create, I wanna create a UI panel. And this is gonna be called inventory. Or we'll call it panel inventory. Just like that. And now inside of panel inventory, we will have a scroll rect that handles allowing the list to be scrollable, ideally. So I'm going to bring this over. It's going to give it a arbitrary size for now. Just something to work with. Like that. I'm going to turn off stretching just to avoid any headaches for now. And then inside of this, I'm going to create a scroll view. So go UI, scroll view. And I'm on Unity like 5.3.4 at this point. I've not updated throughout this uh, RPG, at least for this version of my Unity, because I want to make sure it's all consistent. But you may be on a newer version or an older version, and some things may have changed. But basically, it should be about the same. So here's the scroll view. Just like that, I want to add it. Like you saw in the demo at the start something like that and now this is going to be stretched all four corners except I'm going to bring this anchor over to be in line with the panel like that and now scroll view has a couple of things right it's got a viewport which contains our content this has got a horizontal scroll bar and a vertical scroll bar now we don't need the horizontal scroll bar but for now I'm gonna leave it there so that whenever I disable it, it doesn't throw an error but uh, what, what I'll, I'll go ahead and do that, sure. I'll go to my scroll view and notice it's looking for a horizontal scroll bar. So I can set that to none. If I delete this, and what I can do now is grab this, bring it down, just like that, and that should be fine. Now content is going to be the container that has to expand so that the content within it can scroll. So we'll have to do some dynamic resizing on that for the items that we add to our scroll view. But now within content, what I'll do is I'll create a UI, uh, I'm gonna create an image. I'll line this up in the top left here just like that, bring it over, and give it a size. Uh, we'll, we'll tinker with this if we want to, but for now that's about how I would like it. And I'm going to always lower the, there we go, lower the alpha bit on just like that. And I want to call this item container, or something along those lines. Now this is going to be the element that each item uses to represent itself in the inventory. 
So in this, we're going to have a UI image. It's going to be scaled to meet just like that. Now, what I want to do is make sure all these, all these sizes match. But honestly, um, yeah, we'll find one. We'll go ahead and do it. So this is going to be aligned to the left. And the height is going to be 50. We'll mess with all this whenever we add the actual layout elements to it. Width is fine. And this is going to be 50 by 50. There we go. So it's going to represent the item icon whenever we have one. All I have to do is update the source sprite from code whenever we add the item and it will be pretty cool. So now item container also needs a name for the item. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to align it vertically just like that. And what I'll do is I'll line it up like that. Looks pretty good. I don't know about styling this right now because I don't know what I'm going to be doing with the panels. Just like that. Cool. So item container, it's all it really needs is the item icon and then the item name, right? So now I want to be able to add multiple of these to the content and then actually just stack them like you'd expect. Right now it just goes on top of each other. So to do that, I'm going to grab content and I'm going to grab a layout or a, a vertical layout group. Notice it expands my item to fill the entire in the entire rectangle there. And that's not what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, disable the height expand for now until I figure out what I'm going to do with this. So on the actual item container, I'm going to add a layout element. This allows me to mess with a few things uh, to set it how I want it to be. On this, the height is going to be what we designed 50. And the width is going to be flexible, which is fine because it's going to be able to expand left and right. But we don't want the item to get bigger um, in the we don't want the height of the item to get bigger because it's expanding because it's still going to take up the same space. We just want this to expand over if it extends that way, if that makes any sense. So now if I were to grab this and duplicate them, as you see, they stack perfectly on top of each other because I have defined the height. I've assigned it to the size of the actual container itself. That's pretty cool. So all I have to do now is wire this up into our inventory UI and handle setting the item whenever we add it so we can assign the icon and the name. But for now, what I want to do is I'm going to go and go outside of my scroll view, go into panel underscore inventory, create a UI element that is going to be, we're going to do, do another image, which is pretty much the same as a panel. I'm going to align this over here just like that. Okay, cool. And I want to grab a cool little blue color. Just like that. And I want to call this inventory d inventory details now within inventory details we're going to have a few things we're going to have text at the top i'm going to grab inventory details i'll make sure that this is going to be set to stretch because this panel can stretch and again line the anchors up with the other side anchors so that they're going to stretch together just like that so now if I were to grab this panel and stretch it, you see that it kind of works, right? A couple of things to fix there, such as within my scroll view, item container. Item container needs to be 
icon left item name left so now if I were to actually grab this again there you go pretty cool right okay so now I want to grab my text here and I'm going to scale it out it's going to be called item name and it's going to be boom no 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 it's going to be on the left and then we'll work with the padding here so the width of it blah 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 this is going to be assigned to stretch and it's going to be set for the right it's going to be 10 bottom I don't really care uh, top is 10 and the left is 10 bit of padding around it there and the size is gonna be like 18 now I'll make it 20 22 make it a white and make it bold Pretty cool. Okay, now I need the description as well. So I'm going to do a UI text. Do the same thing here. Just line these up. Just like that. Make it a white. Maybe come down a bit off of it. And this is the items description. Just flavor text. Pretty much. Okay, cool. So this can be called item description. Just like that. And now in the bottom of inventory panels, inventory details, I'm going to have a button. And this button is going to be the button we can use to interact with the item. So it's going to be set to stretch. And then 10. It's going to match what we have up there. The color is going to be something like that. And the text, I'm going to grab the color from the button and I'm going to just basic UI stuff here. Nothing too crazy happening. And I'm going to call it use. Okay, cool. So it looks kind of like what you saw in the demo at the start of this video. So how does it look if we were to Okay. Pretty much bad, right? So what I want to do though is this is going to be stretching just like that. Yeah, there you go. And then item description. It's going to be set to stretch all around and see what that does for us. Hmm. How should I handle that? That's fine. How much are we going to really be doing stretching, you know? Okay, so now I have everything basically ready for us to start writing some more code. So what I want to do is I'm going to go into my resources and create a folder and I'm just not, not a script. I'm doing this just in case I want to reference these from code easily. I may not want to, but if I do, they're going to be in here. It's going to be a prefab for the item container then we can delete the item container and that's all we need so now back in my code reload everything here I want to set up a couple of things I want to be able to reference the actual inventory panel itself so it's going to be when I want to assign it in the inspector so it's going to be public and it's going to be erect 
transform because that is the 2D equivalent of a transform component. I'm going to call it inventory panel. Then again, I want to be able to reference the scroll view within the inventory panel. Um, to do that, it's going to be another rect transform. And I'm going to call it scroll view content. That way we know what parent to add all of our items to. Pretty simple. And then I want a, I want to be able to reference the actual item container in our prefabs folder. But what I want to do is it's going to be a, it's going to have its own little component that's going to handle assigning the item values so we don't have to do that outside of that item because that wouldn't make any sense. So to do that, what I'll do is an item container. Come on, compile, dang it. On item container, I'm going to add a new script and it's going to be called inventory UI item. Oh boy. Create and add. And where did that actually add that to? I don't ever do it that way for reasons. Look at that, it's terrible. So I'm going to open that up now. Yeah, my goodness. Oh. And this will handle, like if we were to add an item, this will we have a method on it so we can call it and say, here's the item we're adding, handle everything for us, please, thank you. So that's great. Uh, so I'm going to attach that to that, it already is, to our prefab. So what I can do then is in my inventory UI, I can make this an inventory UI item because that component is attached to that prefab. And it's going to be called item container. And we're going to load this through the resources folder. Like I said, we may, in fact, we will. And I also want to be able to know if my inventory panel, if the actual menu is visible. So if it is, we know that we can hide it. If it's not visible, we know that we can show it. So it's going to be a Boolean. It's going to be a menu is active. And this can be a property because it's not actually working in the inspector. So it's serializable. And while this could be as well, see, that's what I didn't want to happen. Okay, cool. And then I also want to be able to know in the UI what item in the inventory, which actual button in the inventory was selected. So I know what one to highlight. So it's going to be a, well, no, will this handle that? I think this actually be handled. That'll be handled in the item itself in the inventory. This one, I know what I need. I need an item that is updated when an item is selected. So something like an item current selected item. Just like that. So whenever we add an item, whenever we select an item in the panel, this will be updated so I know what information to send to the... I'm trying to think if this is even something I need to do. Hmm. Now we'll just, uh, we'll leave it for now, but I'm not sure if I actually use that the way I'm saying. Might be handled a bit differently. All right, so item container will be equal to resources again, dot load. I'm going to be loading a, an inventory UI item. And it's going to be within UI item underscore container. In the UI folder, and it's called item underscore container. That's great. And right off the bat, I want my inventory panel, which we haven't hooked up yet, but I want my inventory panel. I want the uh, game object itself to not be active, which means I want it to be disabled so it's not visible whatsoever. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off on load. And now I can turn it on when I hit the uh, key, whatever that may be, in this case, I. 
but you can set it up with your input manager however you'd like. And one thing I need is the UI needs to know when an item is added. So we have to subscribe to those events that we created before, with that event that we created before. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through my UI event handler, and you'll see why it's static in a second. And I'm going to go to on item added to inventory, and I'm going to subscribe a method to it. And that method is going to be called item added. Now that method does not exist yet. It's going to be in this object here. So it's going to be a void called item added. Now this has to match the signature, which is the error it's giving me currently, of the delegate that this event is a part of. So it's going to be item, item. That's cool. Now this UI element knows what item was just added to the inventory. And that's all we needed. So what I'm going to do is, since I need to know, let's see, so I need to know what item we added, have the item that we added. Now I need to be able to update the item that we added and update the information from the item container. So to do that, we can work in inventory UI items. So I'm going back and forth here, but it's going to have to happen that way because of all the stuff we're having to add. Now this information, all it needs is it needs a public item. And then it needs to know if it is selected. Um, we can use that to handle the highlighting of the buttons so we can know what item is selected. Not necessary right now. So we'll go ahead and avoid that. And I'm going to have a method that allows us just to pass an item to this UI element and it will handle updating the content. So set item and it's going to get an item. And I'm going to make this dot item, which is the local instance of the item equal to the item that this method has. So the local to this method item. So now it's going to be assigned and I want to take the item that we just assigned. Now I could just actually why am I doing it that way? Hmm. I could just assign the item directly. No, because this way I can also handle assigning the values. So I'll do a void setup item values. Something like that. And then we can call that from this method of set item. So whenever an item is set, I could just use a setter, but in this case, whenever an item is set, um, we'll use set up item values. And now this is going to go through this and go to the transform component because we have to go to a child of this item and find the item name. And we're going to be using uh, find a child because we're not going to know which index the child is at all the time. Something may happen and uh, the item name text may be above the icon and then we'll be assigning the wrong values to the wrong element. So we're going to do find child. Since this only happens every once in a while, going this route and then using a get component on it's not going to be taxing whatsoever, right? Now you don't want to be doing things like this all the time, every couple of frames or whatever, but this is going to be happening every now and then you're not going to notice a single thing. So it's called item name is the uh, UI element I'm looking for. Keep in mind that that is what am I looking for here? It's what I have in my item container. I'm going to do get component on that item. And the component I'm looking for is the text component. Oops, we need to have a reference to the Unity UI system for that. So Unity Engine dot UI. So text. And on the text component now, we can grab the text property. And we're going to assign the value item which is the item that we just assigned to this inventory UI item, this item right here, we can grab the item name. Just like that. So now whenever we add an item, we'll call set item, it will grab the item, then it'll set up item values, which will go through and add the item name to that element. Pretty cool, pretty cool. And now I need to know what happens whenever this 
button, which is not a button currently, but it will be a button, is selected. So I can click on it and it will pass my details over to the details panel so we know what's happening. It's gonna be a public void because it's gonna be exposed to the inspector so that I can actually use the button component to call this, use the on click method to call this. So it's going to be on select item button. And I'm gonna go through my inventory controller. And now what's gonna happen whenever this is clicked, I'm gonna go through our inventory controller and we're going to, this is where we would go and talk to our details panel. So to do that, I will need a details panel component. Again, back and forth, but in the end, it'll all make perfect sense. Create another script file, call it inventory UI details, something like that. And I'm going to go ahead and apply this once the compilation is done. Apply this to my inventory details panel right there. And it's going to handle a lot of things, so we're not going to get to that just yet. But what I will do is go ahead and set up the method we'll be using so we can go ahead and wire everything else up. There's something along these lines. We have avoid a set item again. And this is going to be looking for an item, item. And we'll also need to know what button was clicked on to set this item. So that way we can know if we were to do something, if we were to interact with it, which button or which item represented in the UI that we have to delete. So we click on log potion in our inventory. We know that whenever we consume it, we're going to delete that item from our UI. Again, that doesn't have anything to do with the back end. It's handled separately, right? So deleting it from the UI doesn't mean it's deleted from the inventory. It's about to handle those, those two things separately. So this is going to be a button. Then. So we're going to be using, again, Unity, uh, Unity Engine dot UI. And then we're going to be looking for a button and it's going to be called like selected button. And this is where we will assign everything to this panel. Um, but for now, we will just ignore that and go back into my controller. And we're going to have a reference to that panel. So the controller will have a reference to everything that it needs to handle all the UI stuff. So inventory UI details. And it's going to be called inventory details panel. Now down here again, a public void set item details. Just like that. And this one you need to know again, item and selected button. And we'll also have to add unity engine.ui. Now this will go through the inventory details panel and it will do a set item, item selected button. And that is all we need to do for this. And now we'll handle all the information in here and in here on select item button. Okay, so now and back in here, I want to, back in Unity, I want to go to my UI and resources here. And I'll go ahead and drag this out here because I want to do a couple more things to it into content. I want to take and I want to make this a button. So to do that, it's pretty simple. I'm just going to add a button component to it. And now this is a button. Pretty neat. What's going to happen though when you click on this is it's going to do some stuff, right? It's not just going to not do anything. <laughs> that would be silly. So I want to, whenever I add this, so this is gonna have a reference to itself. 
So in that case, drag itself down down there, do inventory UI, and it's going to be on select item button. And that's the whole idea. We'll see if that works how we expect it to. So when that happens, it should actually go to this, right? So we'll do a debug log. I want to say, hey, it worked. I want to play. See what errors that I come up with. Nothing right off the bat. It's always fun. Hey, it worked. Okay, cool. So if I have more, if I instantiate them at runtime, I run into some errors. But we'll see when we get there, right? So whenever on select item button happens, I'm going to do inventory controller. I'm going to go through the instance and I'm going to do set item details. And I'm going to pass it the item of inventory UI. And then I'm also going to get the button component of this item and pass it because it's looking for the button that was clicked on. And we know it was this button. Just like that. So the item that was assigned to this UI item and the button that this UI item is on. Pretty cool. So now all I need to know is all the details are being updated, right? And so far they're not. So to do this, we're going to have a few things. We're going to have to reference each component separately, but we're going to do it all in start. So there shouldn't be any issue there. And I'm going to have I'm going to have an item. So we know what uh, detail to show for which item, you know, which which details to show. Then we're gonna have a couple of buttons. So I'm gonna have a button that's going to be the selected item button. And then I'm going to have another button that's gonna be the item interact button. So the selected, inter uh, selected item button is going to be the one that was clicked on and the item interact button is going to be the one that you can click on to use the item. Next, I'm going to have a few text elements. So it's going to be text and I'm going to have, we're going to have the item name text and then we're going to have the item description text and then we're going to have the item interact button text, which is where the action name will go. And that should be all we need for that to get started. And we're going to go ahead and wire all these up in the start of this object so that we can make sure everything's hooked up first. And we're going to do it all in code instead of in the inspector just for a bit of fun. So item name text is going to be equal to the transform of this component, the transform component of this item. And again, find child, we're going to find it by name because this is going to be attached to the details panel, which it is, right? So I can go through and find all the elements that are the children of this panel. So that this one's going to be item name. And I'm going to go ahead and get the component that is the text component because I'm looking for the text type. Then it's going to be item description text. Same thing, transform.findChild item description get component text keep doing that so now I'm gonna do those I'm gonna copy all this <laughs> and this is gonna be the item interact button I don't know what it was called so we'll just go ahead and change this item interact button text and I believe that I have to go through the item interact button itself. So it'll be, because it's going to be the text of that button. So I'm going to go item interact button dot transform dot find child. It was probably called just text, if I'm not mistaken. I also need the item interact button itself, or that won't work. Item interact button is equal to transform dot find child. And it was called uh, interact button. I don't know what it's called. We'll look. Get component button. All very straightforward stuff.
Let me just call him Button. So when everything is set up, what I can do is I want to, on set item, set this dot item to be equal to um, item. And then I'm going to do the go ahead and set the selected item button to be equal to the button that we passed this method. So I know, oops, selected. So I know what button was actually the one that caused this set item to happen. And then we'll just go through and set up the text. So item name text is equal to uh, item dot item name. Actually, I need to get the text property of the text component. So dot text. And then item description text dot text is equal to item dot description then item interact button text dot text is equal to item dot action name and that's fine and dandy but whenever we're creating this we have to also set up a listener so that we know whenever we click on the action button in the details panel we know that it's going to act on the proper item do the right item so to do that I'm going to have item interact uh, interact button. I'm going to do on click. Now I've done this before, um, but this time it's just as simple. Do add listener on the on click event. So we're going to add a method that is going to fire when this event happens. So whenever we click on this button, we're going to call another method. What method is it going to be though? Let's see. I'll call a. Uh, on item interact so whenever that button is clicked this method will be called so we're going to do on item enter on item interact just like that and now this is where we're going to actually use the item so now we know what happened we know that we clicked on the use item button so now we have to actually use the item so to do that the easiest way to do it say it was a consumer block i go through my inventory controller I remember we set this up already instance dot uh, consume item and then we consume item because the item is set in the details panel and then we're just going back to the inventory controller and saying here's the item that we selected go ahead and consume it and that's fine but what if it's not a consumable item what if it's a weapon that we want to equip we have to check to see what we should actually do with it first so I'm gonna do if item dot um, item type is equal to item dot item types dot uh, consumable right so what this just did is we're looking at the items item type which is the enum that we set up and we're comparing it to see is it a consumable is it the value of consumable which is an item types value the enum that we set up if it is a consumable then i want to go through my inventory controller go to uh, instance and then go to consume item just like a second ago and we're going to consume item cool right so i also want to once that happens if it's a consumable it's been consumed right so i'm going to destroy it which would be destroy selected item button is a reason we had that and we're going to destroy the game object of that that's pretty cool but what if it's a weapon we want to equip it so i'm going to do else if do another check here, item dot item type, because I have, my, I have more than one type. Maybe do a switch here instead of a couple of conditional uh, ifs, but that's fine for now. So we're gonna do, if the item type is equal to item dot item types and weapon, then I want to go through inventory controller dot instance dot uh, equip weapon, and we'll equip item, we'll equip item. Just like that. And now what I'm doing for now is I'm going to also destroy this. Because we don't know yet exactly how we're going to handle the character panel. But I know it's going to be destroyed from the inventory. So then destroy selected item button dot game object. And now that's set up. That's pretty much the details panel. Um, let's see what we, we, we've broken. I'm sure we've broken something. Well, first of all, we're not going to have an item in here. Um, 
So what I'm going to do is go to say inventory controller, and what happens? I'm going to wire a couple things up actually, but I want to go ahead and add a couple of items. Oops. Give item. I'm going to give myself a sword. I'm going to give myself a potion of the log variety. Those are the two items that we created, the sword and the potion log. Notice the object slug is what we're using. Now back in Unity, I want to go to my inventory object thing that's supposed to have all the inventory stuff on it. And notice it only has the database. But what I want to do is go to inventory, and this is going to have... Well, this is fine. I'll add this to the inventory, and then on this, I will add. So you look for the inventory panel, which would be this. Then the scroll view content, which would be this. Pretty cool. And now that's set up. What I want to do is. In inventory UI, whenever the item is added, I want to do something, obviously, right? So what I want to do is I want to instantiate that container that has the icon and the item name. Then I want to add it to the content panel, which is the reason we have all that information. So I'm going to create an inventory inventory UI item. I want to call it just empty item or something along those lines because it's nothing right now. And I'm gonna, it's going to be an instantiation of item container. Now, it doesn't need any position values or anything like that because we're just going to spawn it in the canvas and then make it a child of a panel. So it'll, that'll handle on the layout because the parent is the horizontal, or not the horizontal, the vertical layout group. And then the actual item itself is a layout element. So it works itself in just fine so now go through empty item now that we have the item instantiated i can go to it and set the item so go to set item and pass it the item that item added received through the event pretty cool right so now because of that event i've spawned this item and i set the item to be equal to the values of item and now i have to set the parent so empty item dot uh, dot transform dot set parent and the parent I want it to be is scroll view content so to be ch a child of the actual content panel within the scroll view pretty cool if we play this what errors do we have oh it's disabled so I have to had a way to enable it. What's this? Per items are add item database dot instance dot get item item slug sword potion log. Hmm. I'm not sure what that is, but also what we need to do, I'll, I'll figure that out in a second. What we need to do is we need to make an item of this. We're going to do item database, same thing here, instance dot get item. What is it? Oh, instance dot get item. It's going to be item slug, right? So it's going to have a, uh, a reference to that item here. And then I can actually do it this way, which doesn't fix the error, but it makes it where I can actually pass this to the event because currently the event's not being fired. So if I go through, what was it called? UI event handler and go to item added to inventory and pass it this item that's going to go through my event handler I'm going to call this method which is going to call this event which is going to call everything that is subscribed to that event pretty pretty spiffy so let's see what the error was now again just on start it happens Hmm. Okay, so maybe what's happening is 
the database is not being initiated in time. It's a possibility. If I were to try to find that, I guess it's open. I could go through the execution order and do all that, but I think I can fix it by just making this happen at a wake instead of going through the execution order and changing everything around. Just to keep it simple, we'll do this and see if that works. Sure did, cool. So we have two items in the inventory, added potion log and added sword. And we can't see if it worked in the UI because I have no way to toggle it on. So to do that as the pretty much last thing for this video, because it's been over an hour now, I'm sure. Um, I'm going to go back into my inventory UI. We're going to go into update, which is, you know, happens every frame. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to check for input. So I'm going to see if a button was pressed. So input dot get key, uh, get key down. And we're looking for the key code of I. So inventory I, you might want to use a button and then use the input manager to manage your buttons. So you can actually change them or whatnot. But for now, you know, I'm just doing this so you guys can get through it pretty quickly. It's going to be, if I press that button, I want to set menu is active to be equal to not menu is active. Now, what does that mean? What that means is menu is active is going to be equal to the opposite of what menu is active was uh, when I press the button. So if it's false, when I press the button, it's going to become true. If it was true, when I press the button, it's going to become false. So it's equal to the opposite of the current value. So it's equal to true, it's false, false, true. All right, so what I can do with that now is I can actually toggle the inventory panel, set active, and I can set it to be equal to menu is active. And if it's active and I hit the button, it's going to be disabled. That's the whole point. So if it's disabled at first, when I hit the button, it should be enabled. And if everything's right, I'll have a couple items of inventory. Look at that. I have a couple items of inventory. I've got new text, which is because I didn't delete the one in there. But if I select sword, what happens? Pew, nothing. Okay, cool. Inventory details panel was not assigned, I imagine. Uh, which is from... Where does the details panel need to be? You want details. Player has... Yeah, inventory details panel. So I want to grab inventory details, drag it over to in inventory details panel on the player inventory controller, and hope that fixes my problem. So hit I, it's going to toggle it on. Oh, that was fancy. Wasn't supposed to do that, but that was fancy. And uh, <laughs> I can select sword and it work. Sweet. And then I can select log potion and it work. Cool. Notice it even changes the button text, as we thought it would. That's nothing, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. Make sure everything's applied. Delete. Play. Now the moment of truth. Can I use the item? If I have log potion selected, can I drink it? The thing you want to instantiate is null. Okay, so it's trying to equip it, which makes sense. Um, so what I can do to maybe change that is open up my items and add item type and make, no, I do you have that? Hmm, what's the issue then? If it's trying to equip a consumable This doesn't have an item type, no. Maybe that was the issue. I hope so, because I like it when they're simple. That's fancy. I'm not supposed to do that, but I like that. Log potion, drink. Still no. Well, it shouldn't be trying to equip it, I can tell you that. Uh, so what's it doing? Consume item, consume item. So it must be coming from the inventory UI. No, not the UI, the inventory UI. Where am I? I'm lost. The 
the details panel. Where's that? At? <laughs> you have so many things, it's confusing. Um, details. So it's checking to see if it's consumable. If it is, consume it. It's checking to see if it's a weapon. If it is, equip it. Hmm. Let's see what that actually does for me. Weapon. What? Darn to not a weapon. Is there something wrong with my first of all? My stats aren't even called speed. Is it? Isn't it called vitality? I don't know what the issue, but that's kind of bothering me. Um, is it in my item? So item types. Item type. Jason converter. Well, I found the issue, and it was stupid, of course. That's how it always is. Um, this JSON file is not the one in the project. This one is. Notice a difference? Yep. All right, so go ahead and get rid of that one. And we're going to add... In this one, we're going to add an item type. It's going to be... Of weapon... And then we're going to add item type. And it's going to be of consumable. Cool. Now let me make sure I didn't change anything to break anything here. Everything still looks fine. Now if I play this, maybe it doesn't break. Log potion is a weapon. Added that in when I was trying to figure out what the issue was. Because log potion... As far as I'm aware, he's not a weapon. It's doable. As far as I'm aware... What is a sword then? Is it still a weapon? Sword is a weapon. Let me just see what it does. It's probably the same thing. Log potion, drink. Sword, equip. Okay, so that's what I expect to happen. So, why did it tell me that log potion is a weapon? Long question is a weapon. Oh, I'm an idiot. I just changed it to one. <laughs> I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Okay. So I can equip the sword. Yep. Stat bonus is an issue. That's fine. And I can also drink the potion. Um, sword did not go away when I equipped it. Is that because of the error? No, oh, it's a stat bonus error. Doesn't make any sense. So why did sword not go away when I equipped it? Oh, I'm getting tired. Apologize, guys. I'm a little sloppy. Uh, selected item button. Dot game object. What is the error here? Let's go ahead and fix the error. How about that? The error is object reference is not set to a, an instance of an object. Obviously. Um, so it's not finding a stat bonus that matches anything. Is that the issue? Would that be because, as I said before, speed is not a stat. Speed is not a stat.
So if I try now, sword equip, boom, look at that. Log potion drink. And it says you drank a swig of a potion. Now notice it did it twice. Now I know why it's doing that. It's doing that because I clicked on two things before I used it, right? So it had queued up two listeners for that event. So the way I can handle that is, first of all, find where it's doing it. And whenever I set item, notice I'm adding a listener, but each time I click on an item, what's going to be doing is add a listener to the list of listeners. So what I can do is each time go through item interact button on click dot remove all listeners. So each time we know that there's no listeners, the only listener we have is because we just clicked on it and it's got one listener. So I can do I take log potion, click on it, all, all I want, drink, it does it one time. And that is the effect of the log potion, which is cool. And then the sword, equip, notice the equip the sword, and it deleted it from the inventory. Oh, wow, that was a, that was a doozy, guys. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. I know there's going to be a lot of questions, because I had to rush through it a bit, and it was still like an hour and a half long, so I am tired, and uh, I do look forward to continuing this, I guess, this inventory for now. We have a couple of things to do, right? I want to add the stats into the inventory panel. I'm not really sure yet about how they're going to look, but I want to add them in. I want to make the button highlight whenever an item is selected. And I also want to have a way to unequip a weapon. And whenever I equip a weapon, if I already have a weapon equipped, it swaps them out and all the stats and everything are updated properly and as they should be. And then just kind of uh, refine, you know, the way consumables are working. Because if you look here, um, if I go to my player, turn off 2D player see if I click play you can watch here and I drink a potion it spawns the potion here but it's just there so why is that if I look at potion log once it's consumed it's not deleting itself so just little things like that right and I can just go ahead and change this and make it delete itself just by destroying itself for now you might want to play a little animation in the future like you know you drink the potion and it it bobs up and down above your head or something, but for now, we'll just do that, and that should be all I need. As long as that's the consume method I'm calling. Maybe I'm calling the other consume method. Oh, that's the one. So you drink a swig of the potion. Cool. And again, that's going to do it for this episode. If you guys have any questions, uh, feel free to ask in the comments below. I'm sure there's plenty of people out there that are, that are having some questions, and... Plenty of people that are willing to help you guys, and I will jump in and help when I have the time. I'm going to be recording some more videos for you, though. Plenty more to do. Like I said, finishing up the inventory system, moving on to questing and refining some things here and there to eventually getting to the point where we can uh, lay out a little dungeon and go through and kill some things and find some treasure and complete a quest or whatever. That sounds, sounds like a good way to end this crazy fun series any suggestions for anything leave them in the comments below thank you guys for watching my name is austin and i will see you next time